Right, right, everyone, welcome this evening um, on this very cold Joburg evening and also apparently a Harare evening. We'd like yes. to welcome <laughs> one. <laughs> put your, put your hats on. Um, we would like to welcome all of our um, panelists this evening. Um, we're just letting the attendees join, so just give us uh, two or three minutes as they roll in and then we can get cracking. Um, this will be recorded and we will put it up on YouTube once we are, um, once we're done with it. Right, so let's get cracking. This uh, panel discussion is part of a series of panel discussions um, being hosted by the Meta Foundation. We had one last night and we will have another two uh, next week. This project um, falls under a larger uh, umbrella. We are working to unpick where African contemporary art sits within the cultural and global as well as the continental uh, context of the visual arts. And we're doing that by responding to the statement, the problem with African contemporary art is dot, 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 question mark, as a starting point. The project is working to reveal the statement mm. as being complicated and uh, somewhat flawed. Um, we are hoping that through this series of discussions and the project, we'll do some work at repositioning the idea of the problem and reframing it as one that comes from a continental history of colonialism. We really wanna reflect on why our position within the global context is what it is and why for years, the continent has been left out of serious debate and consideration, regardless of our obvious um, contribution and talent. In recent years, there's been a lot of excitement about African work, with many private collectors and institutions rushing to what has been touted as the African moment. Um, and we're hoping that this project, through a series of cross-pollination activities, um, will try to take hold of this um, African moment, um, looking at what it means, why it's come about, how do we protect ourselves from being taken advantage of again, how do we find our own voice in this moment? And how do we take leadership um, in this question? So this particular uh, debate tonight or, or topic tonight will be moderated by Nolan Stevens. And he is looking at this idea of the building blocks of difference. And I'll leave it up to, to Nolan to unpack this a little bit further. Um, this part is being hosted by the Meta Foundation. And if you're interested in looking at the other panel discussions, please visit our Meta Foundation Facebook page so that you can get the details and sign up. And I would like to thank all of our panelists for giving of their time and energy to participate in this discourse. Uh, we're hoping it's gonna be really fruitful. For those um, attendees, you're more than welcome to pop questions in the Q&A box or pop them into the chat. And as we're going along, we will uh, do our best to give them to speakers to um, answer to. Nolan, I'm going to leave it up to you to introduce the topic and to introduce your speakers. And I'll hover in the background for various technical support and screen sharing as and when it's required. Thank you so much, Sarah. Really appreciate it. As Sarah said, I'd really like to welcome and thank all my panelists today for making themselves available to today's discussion, as well as everybody out there in the interwebs. Thank you for joining us. Um, I hope it will be a rigorous and engaging conversation. Um, start, uh, I get to introducing the different panelists, give some context as, as to where my head was at when I um, came up with this idea for this panel. Um, for the longest time, I've had issues with the idea or the tag of African contemporary art, because it seems like we have contemporary art, which exists over here, and then we have African contemporary art, which exists over here, right? Somehow, they um, exist in completely different worlds, which is all right. But if you think about it, why isn't there 
American contemporary art or European contemporary art. It seems like this idea of othering exists mainly around African creative spaces or creativity. And this idea of why that is has been kicking around in my in the back of my brain for quite a while. Um, so this particular panel um, serves to unpick that idea, but by through using materialism as an entry point. And what I mean by that is the elements which artists use to create their work, like paint or sculpture or beading, you know, um, because on the continent, we tend to use materials that are either reproduced or repurposed or recycled, other than um, using paint from a paint bottle or jar. And I'd like to figure out why that is, which leads me into my selection of the panelists today. Um, so when thinking about who would join me in this conversation, I was aiming to get artists who um, speak to a wide scope of creativity on the continent. So I have Mkreti Madolo, um, who is on my left. I'm not sure who is on your screen. Um, yo, yo, and he, the idea behind selecting him um, is a visual artist, just to give context, who's based in Johannesburg um, at the Alice House um, studio space. And he works very much with uh, urban environments and Johannesburg urban environments. Um, I thought it would be interesting for him to be in the conversation to speak up how he uses his materiality in speaking about the context he lives in. Um, and then moving the conversation a bit further on, I then approached Tantan Kabir, who is also Johannesburg based, but is from the Congo, is Congolese, and he has projects that exist both here in South Africa, as well as his hometown or his home country of the Congo, where he works with young artists. And this idea of him working in both is interesting to me, not only because of the fact that he is cross-cultural in the way he's working, but also I've been having a long fascination with his materiality because he tends to also repurpose. Um, and then moving the conversation into a different direction, I then came across the roles in the group, which is, um, Ms. Kapov, you know, um, and when I finally came across her and finding that she is a gallerist, arts critic, and basically quite a well-versed person on art on the continent, as well as the fact that she has a gallery in Zimbabwe with artists who both work in multiple um, modes of mediums, as well as traditional modes of mediums. I thought it would be a very interesting way of addressing this conversation and seeing how personalities in these different spaces react to this conversation topic. And without further ado, I think it'll be a great moment for me to start with asking these personalities to introduce themselves and their practice. Could we start with you, Mpeti? Um, Yes, for sure, brother. Um, thank you for the invitation. I am absolutely honored to be taking part in this evening's discussion. Very interesting um, topic, particularly with how your perspective in terms of questioning is, is, is just coming apart. That's actually very interesting. I myself, I'm a visual artist. Um, I'm working from Ellis House. Um, I work, I work mainly in collage lately, you know, um, 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 I work in a, almost any medium you can possibly think of, although from sculpting to, 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 to drafting and everything in between. And my living in Johannesburg has kind of brought me face to face with what it is to be black in 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 a, in a very very busy and constantly I don't want to use the word judging but but the environment 
is, is, is always wanting things of consequence from you. There's, there's, there's no time where you are never accountable for your actions. Anything that happens to you and happens from you is your responsibility to take care of, as opposed to, say, various other parts of our country. So that's pretty much just my general overview in terms of how my practice is. I'm literally trying to be as contemporary as humanly possible, including how I engage my immediate surroundings, the things I touch with my own hands, the people I talk to with my own mouth, the ideas I share and, and, and such. That's, that's in essence, just my, my, my whole direction. I suppose. Cool, thanks for that. Um, Tantan, could you tell us a bit about your practice? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, sorry about the video. Uh, that's um, I was still struggling. I think it's because I'm using my uh, my phone because of the load shading, trying to be more um, to create uh, security, you know. Um, but yeah, my name is Tonton Kabea. As Nolan said, I'm originally from Congo, the DST. Um, now based in Johannesburg since eight years now. Um, yeah, for those who don't know my work, um, I'm actually in between painting and sculptures and also performance. I actually, my work is about um, the combination between painting and sculpture um, in terms of uh, approach. So I create a new tech. I use the canvas as um, not as a surface where you traditionally artists apply acrylic or oil paints, but actually um, the canvas has become a practice. So maybe we can talk about that further in the conversation, but uh, yeah, that um, basically my work about, yeah. Okay. And you, Valerie, would you like Hi. to give us some insight into your practice and your work? Uh, so in this conversation, I think I'll, I'll want to participate more as a cultural economist because uh, it is also something that I do as a, somebody who analyzes the market and a lot of the issues that you're bringing up in this conversation require to be addressed through the prism of, of the art market and, and the intersection of race and and class politics, and so like a fairly Marxist analysis of the inter and you know, uh, and so a lot of the issues that you're bringing up are actually a product of that uh, that sort of that um, connection between ras uh, class and uh, and race in the African context. So um, so that's and so just to by way of introduction, I. Oh, I'm the co-founder of First Floor Gallery Harari, and uh, we op we see ourselves as a you know kind of a gangster collective, as it were, because while we engage with the capitalist market, uh, we see ourselves as being guided by the principle of uh, common welfare. That is to say that we uh, our objective in terms of uh, practice as a gallery and as a as a community of artists is to ensure the well-being of everyone who participates. And art is just a human activity with its own, you know, with its own dynamics, but, uh, but the primary objective is the well-being of everyone who participates, who chooses to be an artist, but then their, the, their values as of a human being. So, so, so I will break things down like in, res in my response to the question through that, through the prism of, you know, where we're, uh, how we're dealing with humanity, how we address the market and uh, how we address race in the context of the art market and internationally. And why, okay. you know, and how we can change that. Okay. Um, I think I would, having said what you've said and from our earlier conversations, I would like to keep um, you for the last of this first round of um, questions that I would like to ask all panelists, because I do know you have a bit of a bomb to throw in. 
I'm not sure if you remember what that is. Yeah, no, I, I, I have lots of bombs. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I have lots awesome. Of, I'm, I'm just, I, I was born for it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, I will get to you, but I would like you to just go after Tantan and Mkreti, just to give things a bit of a shake up. I think it'll be really, really great. Um, speaking of, let me start off with Mkreti, because you are Joburg based and your work deals mostly with the Johannesburg CBD and living spaces, right? Yeah. Could you speak to us about your process of reusing, repurposing and recycling and how that's, and what stories you tend to tell with that process? Mm -hmm. So if I can take you, I suppose, as far back as say maybe 2017, which is, mm -hmm. which is when my practice really kind of started um, as in, this is when I decided to move to Johannesburg and just kind of take the whole idea of being a full-time practicing artist, particularly in the studio, uh, very seriously. And that means not just expressing myself as a human being and, 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 and sharing ideologies, but also making sure that I'm a living, breathing human being who's presentable in front of other people. So I have hot water and, and a roof over my head. So... My work initially, I mean, I studied fine arts at Walter Sisulu University in East London. And that was a very interesting time in my life. I absolutely enjoyed my varsity years because I suppose of the institution I went to. Um, the people that were, were charged with, with teaching and taking care of us in, 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 in introducing us into what it means to be an artist were very much, um, into work ethic, you know, they strongly believe in, in getting things done, rolling your sleeves up and actually getting your hands dirty. So these are the people who instilled a great deal of, of, of practical work when it comes to, to how I resolve my ideas and that I find, I find it very easy to, to do as opposed to try and theorize everything and make sense of it before I start engaging. And so a lot of trial and error comes with, 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 with that kind of, you know, in your face uh, way of engaging. So when I came to Johannesburg, first thing I started doing is that I started mapping out my environment, not sitting there and actually trying to figure out what's where, but actually going to all different directions from where I was starting at. And this came to me, as, 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 as something that I was, I was, I was taken a little aback, you know, it, it was a great change in, in environment. And, and so it meant that I needed to, to orientate myself with, with, with self, with, with everybody else, and just kind of figure myself out. That's how I started observing, like taking a very close look as to like the most mundane thing, the person crossing the street, um, the person getting off the taxi, um, how many security guards are on one street and not on the other? Who operates a business on this part of the section? Um, the reputation when it comes to certain neighborhoods, um, the go-to places, the hot zones. So I really just started growing roots and, and just infiltrating all nooks and corners. But I'm talking specifically about the Johannesburg CBD area. Um, so what I found here is that Johannesburg has got all these migrant labels that have come here, but all these people, particularly your lower middle class uh, existence in the CPD area, comes from relatively the same structures outside. And I mean, in the very small towns and, 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 and rural areas that then come to Johannesburg to then further their, their economic dreams. It, it got me to, to like to go to Taxi ranks, for instance, in, in, in Johannesburg are very interesting places to actually, I, I couldn't possibly explain what it means to be standing in a queue to, to get from Johannesburg to, to, to Pretoria at, at, at half past 4 a.m. in the morning, where, where, where you need to get to work by, by 7. But that means that you need to get there at a certain time so that you're not late because there's so many of you and back and forth. And, and then just 
And then you have to do go through that whole rigmarole again when you need to leave. So there's like these peak hours where that where town is like so congested and anything is possible. There's like a, a huge buzz of energy that happens on very instant times, like clockwork. And these sort of things really did fascinate me. I went around taking images of, of, of like these functioning spaces. And so I found that there are people who, who, who navigate urbanization in, 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 in our country in very different ways. There's, there's various technologies that are now slowly making their way through you know, the, the various places. We have hailing services. Not everybody needs to be using minibus taxis, but then that's only available to certain individuals. And then these services are not available in certain places. Um, you look at advertising or just your regular uh, um, happening on the street the markets, the vendors, the, the advertising on the posters, the people who own shops, the people who own the buildings, and how all this turns into one organic living thing that will eat you if you are not wary of it, or will assist you if you understand how to work with it. And what that then means to not just me, because my story isn't exactly unique in any way. It's, 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 it's my story, yes, but it doesn't necessarily come from a, a, a hat of magic tricks. It, it, it's, it's the actual thing that I try to use to connect myself with other people, actually, which is why I put it in my work, because I feel it's my way of saying, are we all aware? Do we, do we really see what we're doing? And by that, I don't go out and, and try to fabricate uh, uh, um, non-existing materials or try to rebuild or at least invent anything. I find Africa has a great deal of, 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 of creativity and creativity comes a lot, particularly to me, under, under limitation. So when you have limited resources, when you have uh, limited access to when you are uh, confined, you are forced to think out of the box. We have so much limitation, which means we have unlimited creativity because this is an essence way it's, yeah, I, I used to feel it comes from. So being here with all these various limitations give me then these various out of the box kind of thinkings that I can all incorporate to this one narrative that obviously makes its way out in, in various ways. If you look at the earlier works that I used to make, you know, with the cityscapes and how I would then try to replicate um, a mood by using that coffee and then try to give a sense of time and and and, and just positions that I would pick when, when, when I would make these images, the way I would like to choose the compositions to always make sure I'm including the taxis, for instance, you know, the, the quantum minibus taxis in, 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 in keeping the lifeblood, I actually call it exactly that. Those texts are the lifeblood of how, you know, uh, lower middle class functions in, 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 in the CBD area, particularly during the day when things need to get done, you know, and, 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 and we're all functioning. And from navigating the spaces, I actually came across the materials that I use now, which is, which is these posters that you'll find lying on the streets, you know, uh, posted on the walls, handed out flyers to you on the corner of the streets uh, with all these various messages, but then you'll only find them in very specific places. So all of this just came together in, 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 in no particular way. I certainly didn't seek out for it, except just the awareness that I am a person who needs to engage with with other people and, and, and this is how it's played itself out. As to how important I am in the grand scheme of things, whether my ambitions are worth pursuing, you know, and what that means to the next person, to me, or how I view myself when it comes to trying to acquire any of these things, or at least express myself how I feel I should. It's 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 just a uh, you play it by ear because there's simply no formula to it, obviously. And and it works when you, I think it's just a matter of constantly being aware. Being aware all the time can get tiring. It can show signs of fatigue as well as how you get snappy around other people. You start, you know, being more cautious about your personal space, your, your, your narrative, your, 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 
you get desensitized to some criminal elements that happen so much that you stop getting shot and you know all these sort of things but then they kind of amalgamated themselves into my current part of work right now speaking of would it be possible mm -hmm. i'm hoping for you would it be possible for you to throw up an image of both um, your past works as well as these that you're speaking right now just so then people have a better idea of what you're speaking about you mean to put on the screen? Yeah, yeah. That's the one thing I've been trying to, I cannot seem to figure that out, unfortunately. There should um, be a button. I can, no, I can do, do something. Me. I've I've just, I've got Nick's page on Artsy, right? Uh, I mean, sorry, I've got McKetty's page, sorry. Uh, on, on, on Artsy, Artsy. yes, yes. Can, can, I, can I share the page? Please, yes. That would be, yeah, that let would me, be let me, let me do the thing. All right, so let me share the screen. Uh, sharing the screen, there we go. Um, that's that's so you can see the collaging and you know the lettering from posters. Sorry, I went into full uh, gallerist <laughs> um, yeah, that is and, perfect. Yeah, and then I'll just I'll go back to uh, some of the other works. And you're free to continue talking while these are up, just yeah. so that okay. we have content. Um, which, you know, so my, my thing is, like, I think it's, if you, if you can just go out of your screen, I think it's actually giving me share screen now. It's just my, my buttons okay. were not doing the things. Oh, okay. okay. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. You can just simply, um, yeah. so this is, this is now the later um, body of work that I'm, that I'm uh, referring to with regards to, to how I've tried to immerse myself in the environment of, 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 of what it means. And, and for me, I think my beginning um, phase going into this body of work is that if you look at the male figures, for instance, that are within these ones that are put here is that these are people that if you were to go to Johannesburg Park Station right now, you will find them sleeping on the side of the street. Uh, uh, some of them pick up refuse, uh, um, particularly this gentleman right here is somebody that actually we met. Uh, the photographer got to sit down with and, and, and the man got to share his story about how he on the street. And, and, and again, this whole thing I was saying about how his story, although it is his, isn't necessarily unique to him, but it is a class of people that, that view their world in this way. This is just the circumstance that they have happened to find themselves in. And what that means in terms of how it plays itself out to him now. Does this man have ambitions? Does this man have struggles? Does this man have something to offer capitalism? Because if he doesn't, it seems like it's useless. So does he have to then become a part of his own informal market that, you know, and, and, and what does that mean in terms of him acquiring resources, in terms of moving around, in terms of yeah. just being a general human being who has needs outside of, 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 of just surviving. Living is kind of why we all want to be. Uh, nobody just wants to sit there and constantly live in hand to mouth all the time. People want more than that. And to find these in, 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 in the small things that even the very people who layer, so if you go onto the city streets, especially where public transportation is used a lot, you will find posters that have been laid on top of other posters and, and laid on. So nobody ever goes back to take down and then put something back on. So it's a story on top of another story, on top of another story, on top of another story. The thing that makes me special is the same thing that makes you special, the same thing that makes the next person special. Does that then makes us special because you trying to think out of the box, find a box that you need to then get out of again and then keep the cycle just goes on and it's quite exhausting. These environments are very buzzing and lively and walking on the streets of Johannesburg almost kind of feels like those backgrounds in, in, in these canvases in, in, in that you need to play, pay close attention to, to, to everything that's happening around you. Otherwise you might miss something. Otherwise you, 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 
you will fall short somewhere. Or if you understand how to look at your environment, you are then able to, to almost liberate yourself from becoming maybe a victim or becoming part of the background yourself or just being a story. And then somebody layers their story on top of you and, and it just carries on. I think that's that's a really good point you make there. And it comes through in terms of like we see the abortion posters and the penis enlargement posters and the mm -hmm. find your lovely here, Muti posters, which are all part of the identity of the city, right? And these yes. works almost seem like they are personifications of the city purely because of the materiality that you're using, the fact that you uh, pushing into this idea of reusing, repurposing, working on top of, and that being a, a conversation that, that happens in the city, that being a conversation that becomes part of our DNA as humans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily, as you say, something that is um, isolated to Johannesburg, Joel Berger existence. Um, and to push on that idea, I'd like to move the conversation over to Tonton, because he, picks up on this idea, but relates it both to his existence in South Africa, as well as existence up north in Africa, in terms of Central Africa, as well as in the Congo. So Tonton, could you tell us how you continue this conversation in the materiality that you use? Uh, yeah, I think, um, as you know, I think me and you, we've discussed uh, before on my practice. Mm -hmm. uh, for some professional reason, there are things that I can't um, I can't tell on uh, uh, publicly. Uh, I'll yeah. tell you uh, why. Uh, you know, but uh, the people who are listening to us, I'll tell you why. Uh, but I'll try to approach this conversation uh, on um, on um, <clears throat> on an intellectual level because uh, the, the, the subject is uh, the problem with contemporary African artists. Um, and I think it works, the subject works nice with my, my work and also the reason why I came back to, <clears throat> to Africa. And then also uh, I came to South Africa for some, uh, for the same reason. Uh, because the problem today in Africa is, uh, as professional in the art industry. We're trying to copy or to imitate everything that's come from the Western. And that pushed me to, to kind of create my own refuge, uh, my own residence. When I came to Johannesburg, I joined the back factory. Um, um, that was like uh, eight years ago. And then uh, that was my last residence. Um, since uh, then, I developed this technique that I call uh, sculpting canvas. And uh, when I do uh, exhibitions in public, uh, the question that I expect people to ask in my exhibition is, um, how did you make this? And what material is this? Uh, I've never seen this. I think this is the kind of relevant question we, we don't have anymore in the art world. Few artists uh, like Mchedi and others uh, like myself, we still try to dig in the materiality. Um, I'm kind of tired with uh, when I go to exhibitions and the 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 artist work is very accessible. Uh, immediately once you you look at the work, you kind of understand from A to Z how the artists make the work. I have a problem with that because my background uh, is. Um, how do you, how do I, how do the, uh, how can the public identify your work without uh, reading the signature? So the moment you achieve that for me, then I can call you an artist. Because beside the fact that myself, I'm an artist, I'm also a critic. A, uh, in South Africa, I don't practice that much, but um, so I kind of refused myself for the past eight years to create uh, a kind of work that can interrogate those questions. So it's, uh, it's, it's took me to, to the second point. Uh, I think in discussion, maybe we can, you, uh, P 
people can ask questions, then I can develop. The, se the second point for me would be uh, about decoding African art. Um, and that's where the problem is. We have curators, we have gallerists, we have museum institutions, we have art schools, but yet we still don't know how to give a critique to our artists, include myself. And when we give critique to our artists, we, we give critique based on European standards. So I think that's where the problem is. We need to start understanding African art based on our knowledge, based on our basis, which is what is it that to be, uh, what is beauty as African? Because the beauty, the way we define beauty in Africa is different to, 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 to Western. The way we define material or art in general is different to, to Western. So for me, those are the questions that push me to, to, to work hard and find my uh, a voice that can be through my technique, through my work, that then it become a conversation rather than the concept or the story in my work. But right. the, the technique become for me the concept. Okay. I come from a tribe from the Baluba in Congo. Um, everybody's wearing the, the Russia fabric today. Um, the Russia comes from the, the Baluba, uh, the Baluba tribe. When you go to the Baluba tribe, which is my tribe, you don't need to read the, the signature of those fabric. You know immediately that that's from the Baluba tribe, that's from the Kasai. When you go to Nigeria, you know exactly this mask or this specific type of work come from Nigeria and uh, from the Igbo or Yoruba. You go to Senegal, it's the same. You go to, to uh, Tanzania, you go to the Zulu people, you go to the Kosa people, you, you identify the arts based on the formula. And that mm -hmm. formula you don't give away. And that's why I don't talk about my technique on uh, in, in public because Okay. Artists today is so easy to copy one another, and we yeah. do that, and then you lose the uh, uh, the authentication. Yeah, no, I totally so get that. Those are for me the question that uh, that are relevant to contribute to this conversation. Where the 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 African contemporary arts problem is. I think, um, just to cut in there, Tantan, I think I'm going to ask Sarah if she can please share screens of your art whilst I ask you a couple of questions relating to your art. Um, so a couple of things you've said there is that we tend to have, we tend to evaluate our art based on Western standards. It's very interesting. Like, I, I think I 100% agree with that. Um, but just looking, I'm, I'm going to tie this into what um, Katie said earlier, the fact that we, or at least he makes art, or the, the art creation of the continent comes through this idea or this need for being creative in spite of not having the financial, financial stability that other continents might have to buy materials like paint or clay or whatever else, right? So we tend to use what we have at our disposal. And I like the fact that you've taken something like canvas, like in these examples we're seeing right now, and completely transformed the use of the substrate. You know, you've transformed how we see this as an artistic material by slashing it, by molding it like a sculptural material, um, and by adding pigments to it, I think adds a different layer to how we see this surface element of what a canvas traditionally through Western perspectives looks like, you know. And I guess what I'm leading into my question being is, you've spoken about your traditional heritage and how other tribal groups or peoples on the continent have a signifier or way of identifying themselves. Is there any signifier or identifier that has led you to 
um, create art in this kind of way, in this different way, looking at canvases or pigments in the way that you look at canvases and pigments? How did you get to this point? Is my question. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, they are they are they are different uh, uh, starting points um, in my research that I found how 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 you become um, uh, approved as an artist in um, in ancient Africa um, or. Uh, 300 years ago, you know, um, then I found three elements that constitute the beginning of every life. So you have, you have, for example, the spiral. Mm -hmm. uh, in in many most African arts, you find the spiral as a symbol. Uh, many times we see it, and then we, you know, we it it seems not important we we don't question the meaning of it actually the spiral is uh, those who know mathematics or physics the spiral is the is the small infinite to the biggest infinite or the biggest infinite to the smallest infinite so there's no uh, start there's no end so i that principle pushed me to recreate uh, sculpting canvas based on uh, on that practice. So I sculpt the canvas while it's still wet uh, with the the spiral movement. So why you want the canvas to be relief on a certain surface? That's where you point, and then you sculpt from inside to outside, and then you take the shape. This is just a little bit of how I do. So to get to this point, I had to go back to understand how our ancestors used to, to sculpt or used to recreate art. So there is nothing that I studied in school. Like one of my, my friends said, the problem with art school today is after you, you graduate, you have to unstudy everything that you've learned. So why waste time in school? School is very important, I think, but we need to find ways how to teach our students on how to make these things and specifically to be more authentic. So the spiral is the first thing that I came up to, to sculpt my work. So this is something that has never been done before. And when you look at this, the, the artwork that you just showed before with the building, and if you are aware of the, uh, the Kifuebe mask, is one of the masks in the south of Congo, I think. And the way I do the building, it looks exactly like that mask with things that kind of falling. So that uh, piece of work represents how the media is portraying the world today in a negative way. But at the same time at the bottom, can you, if you can put back that piece uh, so that people can understand. Um, yeah, that one. Yes, yeah. that one. So when you look at the top of the piece, you can see that no, the building just... is completely collapsed as if it was in Iraq, in, in, the, in the east of Congo, Sudan, where we have conflicts. But at the same time, the bottom of that piece, you see colors. The top is more rusty, is more brownish. And the, the, the bottom part is more colorful and people are actually in, a, in, a, in a, they are, they are living the, the, the life, you can see. You see all kinds of people mixing each other. Uh, mm -hmm. They're going to their everyday life, everyday jobs. But the building, uh, the city where they live, you can see that's completely destroyed. And this is actually how the media portray. And this is also how the world is asking African artists 
to with everything that is negative in Africa. So for me, I tried to, to question that within the, uh, the art world, that's the, to, to create art, you don't, ha you don't have to come from, uh, from poverty. To create art, you don't have to, to come from, from whatever negative that the media portray or that many residents in the world are asking African artists to, to, to deal with, you know? So my work is, uh, is, is more that, it's more the technique become a question. And within the, the, the technique that I use, uh, there is the concept, obviously. Um, so, yeah. So if I'm understanding correctly, and I'm just basically expanding on what you're saying right now, is that the purpose, at least in your case, for reusing and repurposing materials is not to reinforce this idea of Africans being less than or not having finances to do things. But it's questioning the way that the world sees us. It's questioning the way we are presented to the outside world. Is that correct? Am I correct in summing yes. it up that way? Yes, I think what okay. you say, what you say is, uh, is, is exactly it. But I will add by saying that um, um the i also reject the idea of using um materials that every artist are using uh we have an art store where um we all go buy acrylic oil paints and all kind of um tools mm -hmm. and um what you're gonna do with it my question is, how do you expect to be unique with uh, the other artists who buy this? Um, I don't think, I don't think, um, I don't think reusing materials that are uh, abandoned, uh, kind of giving a second life is, uh, is, uh, is something new. This existed long ago. This exist, existed many generations before us in Africa. So I don't find this new, like in uh, many people say, um, um, many people say this become more uh, contemporary. When you touch something that is, has been used and then you reuse, then you become contemporary. This is nothing new. What I find new is how you use the material. In my work, I recreate what many artists are looking outside to bring in their studio. I recreate that in my studio. Some of my material take up to two years before I use them. So I buy the same canvas, I destroy the, the canvas, I leave the canvas in, in, in rustic water. And then after when I have, after a few months, I take the, the canvas out, it's completely like something that you could find on the street. So I recreate that uh, phenomenon in my studio so that I have full, uh, full control uh, with the process. So everything I use is actually, the, it's clean, but when I, I process before I get to the point of, of producing the piece, the process itself for me, I found that it's, it's a performance on itself. It actually can be filmed. Like this piece right. uh, that is on the screen now, it took me almost two years to, to accomplish because I have to wait certain process to, to be ready so that I can go to the next and next stage. Interesting. Um, I'd like to take that up, take this as an opportunity to move on to uh, Valerie particularly because you work with both artists who work in this reusable, recycle, repurpose mode, as well as with artists who work in traditional me modes of media. Um, could you speak on that before speaking on any other well, aspect of this first? Yeah, uh, well, I think it's, so Tonton brings up a couple of points with which I disagree and with which I agree. So on okay. the one hand, you argue for individuality. On the other hand, you argue for uh, culture as a set uh, as a set category 
And those two don't coexist. If somebody can be defined by their tribal fabric, then their individuality as a as a person is somehow erased, right? And yet you point, you want to be seen as an individual. Like the truth is you don't need to be, you know, no one needs to try to be. It takes much more work to stop being an individual than to be an individual because you're born an individual. No one has been born Taunton Kabea before. So trying to prove that you're more Taunton Kabea than anyone else is kind of crazy. So what, what you are, trying to argue for is the is the what sort of so the imitational kind of uh imitational practices that are actually less authentic so so what i'm saying is that no one needs to try to so it takes more work to imitate because you have to step outside yourself you have to do something that you don't actually believe in right so but then if you're doing something that is truly of yourself that you have thought through that comes from your place in your time then you will inevitably be unique and you will inevitably be yourself because that is the only thing that you're called upon to do as an artist right in your practice and you will find ways that are not different that are not different because for the sake of being different that is one secondly i really take issue with the idea of african non african binary even with no one's suggestion first of all what often happens in the context of african contemporary is the fact the very word african i mean i've been working you know we've been um, Two years ago, I helped co-found something called the Emerging Painting Invitational, which is a Pan-African Emerging Painting Prize. And in the first edition, which we did uh, as a live exhibition in Harare in 2019, uh, uh, we had people coming to us and we had artists from, I think, 15 different countries. So we had artists from, uh, we had an artist from Ghana, we had an artist from, uh, we had artists from Ethiopia, um, we had artists from Kenya, South Africa, Zimbabwe. Let's see who are, I, I'm missing. I'm missing people. Um, uh, we had Moroccan artists. We had a Nigerian artist. And one of the interesting things that came up was what people asked: Is is there a common theme that emerged? You know, and I and there wasn't. There wasn't because you're talking about artists who come from large on the planet with the most incredibly diverse and differing um, cultural polarities, climates, languages, political dynamics. So to so I find it really problematic to for you say, yes, you come from Africa, but you cannot speak for all of Africa. The only person you can speak for honestly is yourself and your place. Like, you know, because when you say we in Africa, you, you're not speaking for we in Morocco, you're not speaking for we in Sudan. And, and people in Sudan would argue that you would, would have a problem for them. And I think it is really, and if we don't want Africa to be called a country, then we need to be arguing the point of being recognized on our own terms and not be defined in terms of that incredibly problematic binary. And Nolan, no, you're wrong. There is just as Chinese contemporary, as Brazilian contemporary. There are geographic segmentations that are happening everywhere if you do the research. So, so it is, it's just that the pain point for you is being singled out as African. The pain point for Indian contemporary is being singled out as Indian and being ghettoized, right? So if you do look at those connections, you, and, you know, and if you are attentive to something other than your own pain, then you will find that you share a lot more with people of, especially across what is known as the global South, right? So, and that, that is a really interesting, it brings me to my next point, and I will get to the point you are interested in of speaking about our artists, is that culture is not a static, is not a static thing. Africa, what you call as African culture, or the things, the defaults that you are speaking about, did not arise in and of themselves. They have not always been that way. People have been trading, uh, like I come from Zimbabwe, right? when they do did archaeological studies of great zimbabwe which is going back to the 14th and 15th century 
right? They found elements of Chinese pottery, uh, things made in Mozambique, India, and uh, you know, uh, you know, in their Arab Peninsula. Now, this means that people from different countries and different cultures influence and see the world because that is inevitable, right? So there is no such thing as culture that is set in stone that is pure. There is no such thing. There is that purity does not exist. And that is the greatest gift that you can give to yourself is to say that I can be myself, be authentic, be myself, because I can take on the whole world. I can be the, I can look at the whole world and still be myself because I can pick and choose as an individual, as a human being, because art is something. The one thing that has always been shared by the world, and you look at any culture on the planet going back to millennia, millennia, we're now looking at even closer to, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, if you look at, you know, if you look at archaeology and current contemporary archaeological research, is that art is the, is the first evidence, really, like the earliest evidence of civilization, you know, which means that art is a truly human feature, something that we all share together, something that we've been able to share together as humanity. And for me, this is a really crucial point this is because I um, as a person who hasn't been who wasn't born in Zimbabwe and I and made my home in this country this is what brought me it was art that brought me here the thing that connects me and the the reason that I stayed in Zimbabwe is because because of art right because I found art that that I could connect with and you would argue that I don't but I would connect with because it has the word art in it because it is something that speaks to me as a human being at that primal level of humanity that comes before being African, before being European, before being Chinese. And that, that driving fire that pushes all of us that we're born with as artists, right? So with this in mind, um, I, will, I will share a couple of works. And with this in mind, I will turn and we'll, I will share some images in a second. The artists that we work with at First Floor Gallery the one thing that that has been the founding ideology of uh, of our practice as a gallery, apart from focusing on human beings, and that is giving individual artists the space to truly be themselves, without the pressure of external market concerns, without the pressure of of what someone else is doing, because that is a distraction from being yourself. And what is, and also trying to invest in what it means to be yourself, intellectually, culturally, spiritually, to be yourself, being a person who lives in this moment, in this place, because that is, that is the only place that you can speak to and you're the only person that you can speak about, right? And sometimes you're fucking born to be a painter in oils, and yes, it is the hardest job to do, Taunton, right? That is the hardest job to do because as you correctly put, what is it that you can do that no one has done before, right? In this medium that hundreds of thousands of people for at least, you know, at least, and at least with oil paints, at least 600 years. And in terms of painting, at least, you know, at least 10,000 years have been doing. What is it that you can truly say? Well, I'll tell you what you can say. You can truly say something as yourself living at this time and in this place because no one has ever done that before. And you can do that in any medium that you can choose. And that will be authentic, original and incredible if you're being true and if you're if you're even a little bit gifted right so with this in mind i'm just going to share a few a few images of artworks of the artists that we work with and i'll share images of two two sculptors and um, one painter all right so the first uh, the first images that i'm going to let me just do the share screen situation share screen um, to, to do. So I'm going to show you the works of um, Takunda Regis Billiard. Now, Taku makes works that incorporate traditional, like what you would call traditional, um, traditional materials. He works with horns and uh, hooves, and he introduces contemporary materials into his work. This is, um, this is, um, uh, as you can see, he uses wires, he uses repurposed um, 
um, like in this work, let me just see, he, like this large work, he uses repurposed, uh, what is it, what are they? Flip-flops, that's right. Um, none of the work, none of the work is anthropomorphic. None of the work is zoomorphic. All of the work is incredibly contemporary. You can't imagine that somebody living 500 years ago, 100 years ago could have made that work. It didn't happen, right? It could, it's not possible. He uses wool. The way he introduces his materials, the way he speaks, speaks about uh, what he wants, you know, his life is, is a fusion, is, a, is a, an, an intimate fusion of his life as a contemporary Zimbabwean who is interested in spirituality of his people, but who's also deeply concerned about, deeply concerned about how contemporary life is changing that spirituality, the impact the impact of contemporary materials, the impact of urbanism, the frictions between urban life and, and rural values, right? This, in, this, in this work, he's using, he's using leather straps and uh, a goat horn, right? Or cow horn, I think. Uh, here he uses wool, like artificial contemporary media. In previous bodies of works, he incorporated books and telephone receivers. I mean, those are, he had a body of work called Runari, um, where he speaks about the idea of how in spirituality you have communications between the spirits and how and what how that has been transposed through contemporary media and what does it mean in other bodies of work he questioned the value of religion. This is somebody who <laughs> really thinks about who. <laughs> presents a culture as a dynamic, something dynamic through the prism of his vision and from his view, his own pain, his own history, his own background, you know, and yes, there is a ritual element to it, but it's, it's very much of its time and of its place. Now I'm going to show you the works of Julio Rich. Let me just, uh, who is a completely different artist, like an incredibly different artist. Let's um, this is uh, his last uh, solo exhibition with our gallery in Harare. He works with um, he works with molten plastic. Right? So I mean, it's pretty difficult to really, really appreciate the um, the complexity of the work because it's a multi layered molten uh, uh, low heat plastic uh, incorporated into mesh. Um, the work is, so yes, it is repurposed. He, you know, he collects plastic or, you know, and by now he buys it and he entirely transforms it. He transforms it because of who he is, where he comes from and how he sees the world, right? These works are landscapes in their own way, right? And Taunton, you would approve because they're unique and no one else does that, right? But the reason he does that is not because he wants to be different. The reason, the reason he works with this material and in his manner is because trying to understand his own space and time, he's, he's a contemporary sort of urban Hararian, but his uh, father is from Malawi. His mother is from Mozambique. His family in Mozambique fled the civil war in Mozambique. He's trying to construct an identity in a complex, in a complex setting and in an urban setting. He's not, I mean, these are, these are ropes that have been sort of like in this particular, the furry works. These are ropes that have been woven together and then ripped on the side to burst out of the confines. He uses narrative properties of materials to speak to issues that are important to him. He does not, he's not interested in what anyone else is doing. And he's trying to articulate the world the way he sees it, but also find, you know, to imagine a world that can be a better place. For instance, this work called Mapping Mbari is based on maps of Mbari that he has constructed, right? So if you look I mean, if you could, could you share the screen? Sorry, yeah, I was just so, about to say we are not seeing the work. Oh, really? Could you, yeah. Yes. Oops, I think. Share. Oh my goodness! I haven't shared the screen. That is crazy. Yes, I yes. was I was talking so much and <laughs> and it's wow. I can't. Hold on. Hold on. I was like, where is it? Hold on. Where's? Bear with me for two seconds. I was saying. Why didn't anyone stop me, guys? I, I think. I was 
I was waiting until I realized, oh, okay, it's not. I thought there was something wrong with my screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, where's the preview? Damn it! I was because, oh, come on, and I'm looking at it. What, <laughs> hold on, hold on, just bear with me. Uh, Julia, uh, come on! It was I was looking at it. Now it's disappeared for me as well. What mm. happened? Because the other ones were showing, you could see all the other ones. Yeah, yeah we saw the, the first one, yeah. Let me just, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Uh, Julia, let me open it. All right, let me, okay, bear with me. Come on, now, uh, it's a Zoom thing. Hold on, Zoom is now, um, hold on. Let me just, let me. Hold Just on. while we're taking this moment, I want to remind um, our attendees if they have any questions, you're more than welcome to put them in the Q&A. Yeah. Can you see the screen now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so in this work that is called Mapping Yambari, so you, it's very difficult. It's a multi-layered work. He's actually is mapping the neighborhood of a, like a, an extremely politically important and significant uh, neighborhood and, and looking at it. Uh, to, uh, you know, from a, almost a, like an aerial view, but then kind of reshaping it through color and, uh, you know, in a history, hold on a second, my son is calling me. Can we share to somebody's question, please? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, not too sure what to do right now. <laughs> yeah, so I think I think uh, if you guys can allow me to 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 say something for a second, um, I, I think Val here. yeah, I think Valerie um, uh, didn't understand really what uh, I was trying to emphasize in my statement. So um, mm -hmm. for me, it was a question: uh, How do you expect to be different if if you go to the art store and buy? 100% material and then create from the same material you buy from the art store and create an, an art piece and expect to be different to other artists. Myself, I go to art store, I buy also acrylic, but it's the material from, it's the same as in Chedi. I'm sure you, you they have been in your studio and I've seen um, uh, some of your work in process and some of your work that uh, 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 were finished. And you could see that there are materials that you you couldn't you can't find in art store. Those are the I'm more interested in that part than mm -hmm. the way you, you manipulate the acrylic on other material. That's something different than using the the hundred percent material you buy from the art store and then expect to be different using every everything from there. Then you are a ready-made artist. That's where I have a problem with the contemporary art. Because if we have to, if we have to be uh, identified, um, like uh, uh, Valerie said, you can't be, um, uh, you can't, you, you can only, you can only try to be yourself. Um, I used to think that way also um, until I realized that no, being an artist is not something. Uh, it's a gift. You don't know where it comes from. It's a something. It's a charge, uh, a package that you have and you have to deliver. And it you are like a soldier. You need to execute uh, exec, uh, to 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 apply and show to the world the gift that has been given to you without knowing where it comes from. It doesn't mean you have to be you. Or you have to follow the basis. For me, I follow the basis from my my traditional so, so if i that's... if i may because i um i agree a great deal with with with, with what Wu Tonton actually uh is, is saying in that particularly so when i was listening to you um I briefly try to describe your process is that what 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 in essence i, I get from it is that you could go yes to the store you could simply but there's a part of your process that you can't buy. 
And I exactly. think the buying, the buying aspect of, of, of what we are trying to say differentiates us from, 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 from say, Western uh, contemporary art in that where we, it's not even necessarily the material, but the question, I feel. So the question, what is wrong with African contemporary, it, it almost presupposes that there's an answer, first of all, that we must all agree on. So there's a right and a wrong way to go about it or something like that. The beautiful thing I see is that listening, for instance, to Tonton and then watching, uh, seeing some of the images of the other works that, that, that the art in Harari and, and the artists over there expressing themselves in is that the thing is that not there's a problem, but it's that we actually don't have to be in agreement. Yeah. In, 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 in that we practice in a particular way that identifies us all as a particular group. Perhaps yeah. our individuality, or at least how, how far we're willing to push that is really the, the, the not problem. Yeah. You know, I, th I think the thing that, that kind of almost sets particularly African contemporary apart is that if, if only more people would then go you know, as far as you can take your material. I had to change materials because of how much I could do with it, because of the limitations that it said gave me. You know? and, then, and then I found a different way to relatively say the same thing, but I needed, I needed to use more, more words, I suppose. And there was a very limited vocabulary, say, with just canvas and acrylic paint you know so being able to then use so the problem with like take for instance language is that it's a very limited if you're speaking a specifically you're speaking english therefore you need to use english words to exactly. convey an idea that you could, that you could say in any other language but because you need to use these words therefore you are limited by your your materials in terms of yeah, how far it is mm -hmm. mm, the beautiful thing about visual arts is how far you can without without some limitations. And the thing that would limit you, and this is a self-inflicted wound, is, is to rely on Herbert Evans. This is yeah. Yeah. all biomaterial. Is to rely on Herbert Evans to give you materials to make what you need to make. Whereas yeah. that's not necessarily the case. I think I think this question, I I do genuinely have a a, a big issue with the question in itself because there's no right answer to it because of how it comes out yeah you know? i think so in, for, even for us to to i agree yes tan -tan? Uh, are you there yeah no tan -tan? i i agree with uh what's uh yes um yeah can you hear me um, yes, yeah, uh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you, you know? Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Fantastic. No, I was saying I agree with Mchedi. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I I think this question is very fascinating and very um, complex at the same time. Uh, the problem with contemporary African art, um, uh, because you know we. I'm speaking as an artist, and at the same time, I try to do the job of, of what um, critique and, uh, uh, I mean, professional critique, and then uh, curators and people who are um, in, who are outside the art studio, who actually um, help things to, to move on, like a museum and galleries. And, you know, so some artists like myself, we try to do. Uh, the job of uh, artists Can because we it? see a lack of, you know, the needs of to, to, to go forward. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. 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 Yes. I, I, I was saying, um, I think we, myself as an artist, um, I'm doing two jobs at, uh, this time, uh, at this a particular period because 
uh, there is a lack of what artists are expecting from institutions. When I talk about institutions, it's, uh, you know, curators, gallerists, museums, and uh, all the people who decide uh, in, uh, in the art world. As African, we uh, are one of those who think like we have to, we have to, to own other cultures identity to be ourselves. That's where my problem is. Um, how can you, how can you talk about the future museum of uh, the future museum of contemporary African artists of today, if we we are on the we are on the line of Matisse, Picasso, and other um, French or Dutch artists to start it with um, these materials that uh, we, we we are using. I I don't have a problem with it, but what kind of identity are we trying to own? If we have to to use more than fifty percent of 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 an identity that is not ours, because I think for Africa to be on the table to have a conversation with, um, when I talk about Africa to be uh, uh, on the table of conversation, I'm talking about institutions. Because as an artist, I mean nothing without my work, and institutions such as museums are the one who actually uh, establish my value, my work's value in the future. So how are you going to sit on that table with a uh, uh, French museum, Asian museum, or American museum, and have a conversation about, um, let's say, David Kolowane's work? Um, David Kolowane was a student of um, European masters, if he was, but he wasn't. because. David Kolwani is so unique in his work, and that's why it's gonna be so relevant. But this is a, an, an example of how we're going to define ourselves in the future if we don't uh, own our identity. So this has nothing to do with being against um, um, Ebert Evans as an art store. I go there often to buy materials, but I always push the artists that are always mentors, uh, always mentor young artists, that you have to find your own material because that's going to take you to the next level. The acrylic we use, the canvas we use, you have to manipulate in a way that it gives you another dimension. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my my point on this. Yeah. So, so um, Tonton, Basquiat did not contribute anything. So Basquiat is a waste of time. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. I did, no, I didn't say that. Basqui, this. But you I did. Don't but talk you did. You here's you're actually. So here's the thing. You need to be. You need to be consistent in your arguments, right? I think it's a really, you're making an important point, but you're no, no. saying that identity is something that, and also, so you're say, actually arguing that you're something. actually a capitalist. Let, let me, me say explain something. to you. Yeah, but you're a capitalist. No, no. You're, no, no. look, let me tell you, no, no. No, Africa no. does, African artists uh, don't need to be at that table. To, uh, allow me to Fonda, respond. Just let me explain uh, what I mean. Let me explain. No, no, what allow me to respond. No, no, allow me to respond to the question. Allow me to respond to the question about basket. Allow me to respond to the question, the question. of basket. I respect basket. No, 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 I'm talking, I'm, the question is the, the, the contemporary African art, the problem with the contemporary African art is, so if we don't raise questions such as this, I'm talking as a studio artist. I receive students from different school, uh, art school in my studio. And this, the kind of question they ask me, it's so pity. They, they come out of school, they don't know what to do. And then they come in my studio, they find things that they never, they never saw in school. And that's why we have jobless artists, sorry to say that. But the question with, about Basquiat, Basquiat, is another, Basquiat was born in the US. We, he was born in the US, he's a, he's a black artist. He, he doesn't know uh, much about what we're talking 
about African arts as people on the continent. I, I'd love to invite him if, uh, if he was still uh, here today to come to Africa and get in touch with the tradition and he, and he everything. To, because for me, the source of inspiration Africa. is he not only what to I Africa. see today, it's also how can I dig from the past? Those are the basis. If you come to if Africa I, for a visit of a week, are you talk, is it the same as what we're talking about now? Is no, that different? No, I, I, that wasn't, that's the reason why I'm in South Africa that wasn't the for point eight I years. Was there is this, that wasn't there is the point that, I was making. Yeah, because I wasn't making I a point about Africa. Yes. I was making a point about painting. So very different things. But, and the other no, but the, the, the question is African contemporary. Uh, the problem with African contemporary art is because otherwise we're going to, that's exactly where the trap is. Otherwise we're going to talk about other people's art. We have always to be in Africa because that's the question is the problem with contemporary African art. That's the question. We can't run away from Africa. Well, I, 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 you know, I, I've already raised the issue of the binary in the first place that you shouldn't talk about Africa as such because you're talking, you're, you know, you're not in a position to speak for the whole continent and neither am I, neither is anyone. And that is really okay, you know, right? But the, you raise an interesting point about institutions, right? My view personally is that you will never get acceptance. Uh, why do you want to sit at a table in a French museum, what does it contribute to you as an African? Like if you, if this is your identity, then the institution you should be building is one in Africa. And I fully endorse that. Why should an African try to prove anything to anyone else? And I can tell you why you're trying to do that is because of money. Because the, that is, you know, the, the overwhelming market for what, is African contemporary and the overwhelming problem is, is one of capital and is one of money. And the reason there are issues is because the market for the buyers of African contemporary are overwhelmingly not African, right? The institutions no. that are validating African contemporary are overwhelmingly not African. So you're absolutely correct. But my view is that until Africans stand up and build their own institutions, which are not, which are not constantly referencing the center, it's not going to, nothing is going to happen. So what I, are you doing? Yeah, just go <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and this guy, this is this is my son Tafadzwa. Hey there. Yeah. yeah. Hi Tafadzwa, how are you? Yeah, he's, he's a guy who is the future. He's actually, he doesn't want to be anywhere else. He wants to be in Africa. Probably. So if I may, if I may, if I may, just, just, just uh, a little bit. Um, this is now, I'm just gonna literally just pop a little bubble that I found uh, during, during your guys' back and forth. The whole thing about uh, being a capitalist. So I remember uh, just not too long ago, I was doing a workshop out at JAG with a few people and this sort of thing actually came up and I did ask this question, I suppose it's relevant to ask even now. Um, being a capitalist as an artist, or at least not even, not even an artist, but like as a black person, seems like, a, like, a, like, a, like, a, like an alien thing that a black person needs to adopt. It's, it's actually not a black thing. It's an evil white man being capitalist and Tina, we are this Kumbaya nation that then needs to not seek after money. Perhaps we do want money. Personally, I don't have a problem with money. If anybody you know, were to in any way say, perhaps I'm only doing it for money. This is kind of like going back to the whole thing of, I feel it's, it's, it's necessary that we, 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 we become different in that way that we have all these aspects everywhere. We have black capitalists, we have conscious black, uh, we, we also even have unconscious blacks. I will tell you this, they do serve some function because you see uh, mainstream media using the, 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 the ignorance of, 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 of people against themselves. You see it in marketing psychology and, 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 and then so on. But that's, that's, that's not really the point I was really trying to go to. This is just in, in the spirit of, I suppose, the actual question in itself, which uh, Nolan uh, has posed, which is what is the problem with mm -hmm. uh, uh, African contemporary art? 
And I think just to, sorry, Reese, mm -hmm. continue. I was going to say to move on to what when he was speaking on, or we had mentioned about, I think to Tom Tom's point, um, yes, Basquiat referenced African heritage and all of that. That's all well and good. But as Africans, um, when we speak of, like when all of us on this panel speak of our experiences as Africans, yes, we can't speak for the whole of the continent as in the same way an Asian wouldn't speak for the whole of Asia, right? Because, I mean, forget the fact that Africa is the most divided continent economically, religiously, you know, you name it, we are the most divided continent on the planet. But with the aim of me selecting the people I've selected on this panel was to get as an divide, well, inclusive opinions as possible. The only way I was gonna get a holistically inclusive opinion base on this panel is if I had 54 members on the panel, which is ridiculous, right? That's like, that would never happen. That's just an insane notion. But having somebody who works both yeah, in South Africa and the Congo, having someone who works in Zimbabwe, which is different from someone who works in South Africa, having someone who's rooted in a practice in Johannesburg gives you different voices of an artistic African experience. So how else are we gonna speak about the problems relating to Africa if we don't have varying voices? I think by saying Africa is a continent and not a country, and using that as an excuse not to speak about the complexities of Africa is like a scapegoat. You know, like how else are we gonna have these conversations? Because if you're gonna say constantly, we can't have these conversations because the whole of Africa isn't represented, we would need to have panel discussions with 54 members on the panel in order for the entirety of the continent to be represented. So, as you so, isn't yeah, insane. Yeah. Um, um, perhaps not even necessary, uh, like something extreme, like your solutions <laughs> sounds very extreme. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 I suppose it's not even a matter of like who's where, like all these individuals coming together to agree on one thing. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a very, you know, that's not so Tonton earlier on and, and, and he kept insisting on the fact that he needed to play multiple roles as a practitioner, as well as, as a formal uh, um, critique, uh, somebody who needs to do some sort of mentoring to, to uh, new artists, uh, emerging artists, and, and, and that sort of thing. So I remember particularly with us, and I feel actually to some extent, everybody in here has actually touched on it. It just didn't seem like something to highlight at the time. Um, take myself, for instance, when I finished uh, um, um, my national diploma, I had to go and do a small business course management uh, thing. You know, the government offers these sort of things uh, uh, freely in our country, which is, we are very privileged to have. So I had to do that because now I have this trade skill that I'm not entirely sure what to do with. And so I need to then dabble in capitalist psychology and understanding marketing, um, financial management, and all these sort of things to then even be sitting here and be talking about the problem with uh, African. So perhaps there's very little of that in that it's this, it's this um, almost just this excuse not to do the hard work. The hard work is done in those institutions. Those, those, those. Oh no. Are you still there? Is, is it is it gone? I think he's frozen. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely wow. frozen. Um might be a good time for you to respond to this, Valerie. Um, whilst so so here's the thing. I, I, I look. I really so I, I really do agree that with the fact that uh, I mean on the issue of capitalism. Look, artists are proletarians. We're not capitalists. I think that is really important to articulate. A capitalist, somebody who's actually you know part of the system in a in a in a in a work to base capital, right? Uh, artists are actually victims of the system, rather you know proletarians in that sense. 
So uh, we don't have, and also quite frankly, we live in a we live in a world which is where capitalism is the dominant system. So we don't really have an option of not engaging with with that system un, until there is a revolution, right? So you know, so to pretend that so we don't have to we don't have to be co-opted. We don't have to call ourselves capitalists. We just say that we operate in this context. And yes, you do need to sell artwork to make a living. And that is that is how it is, right? So it's not it's not a, it's not a compromise. It's survival. And the fact that artists are by and large disenfranchised and are not uh, do not have, you know, are not able to do do not have power groups. We do not have unions, right? To to push for artists' rights, you know, means that we are the disempowered. Like we are, in fact, a disempowered proletariat in this context. So this is it's not a big deal, right? The, the big deal is what you know whether we accept that this is how it is and this is how it's always going to be, or whether we actively try to do something about it. And I, I think it is correct to think that as you know in the African context, we really do have an opportunity to reinvent things, you know. And yet we, on the government level, on society levels, we have this march towards capitalism, you know, on the, in in societies which is a whole other thing. So, but I, you know, hello? Are we all still there? Yeah, <laughs> yes, we're, yeah. We're, so that, we're listening, that's, yeah. So that's, that's, my, that's, that's my concern is that, that artists, you know, like the art world, you know, like we haven't raised this issue at all. The art world is overwhelmingly in the service of the 1%. Why do we have, why are artists overwhelmingly poor? And why is it that, you know, we are all constantly selling things to the super rich and the privileged. And no one seems to question that idea at the artist level that this is wrong. And also the more successful artists become, the more they look down on ordinary people who are exactly like them because they can't afford to buy their works. And yet every artist as a career artist wants to be validated, wants their prices to go up to be more exclusive, to be less accessible to the common person. What, what makes that right? Why is that, you know, why are we not questioning that at the level of Africans? Because, you know, at that level, why don't we engage with that question? I find that really deeply problematic, mm -hmm. right? That artists yeah. believe in their own exceptionalism in some way, an exceptionalism that will take them to the stars, that will take, let them hobnob and drink champagne with the super rich, but you will never be the same, right? And instead of questioning that system, you're becoming, you're becoming appropriated by that system. Whether or not you're African, whether or not you're Chinese, European, wherever, you know? That's because that's the overwhelming system of the art world, that yeah. it's in the service of the super rich. And, uh, and we really need to grapple with that. That's a soul searching question. You know, why do you accept that that is okay? I don't accept that that is okay. I, I do, you know, we as a gallery also do a lot to make sure that, um, you know, all our, you know, because, you know, it's really interesting how people like, how people expect, you know, white people to be at an audience, you know, in a, at an art opening to validate that, that opening, right? Because, because that's what gives it, you know, that gives it that pa pattern of, of accessibility to power and money, right? That uh, you need somebody important because you don't respect yourself enough to be important. You don't respect your mother or your father. We very early on at our gallery decided the only guest of honor at an exhibition is going to be the artists and their family because those are the people that make it possible without whom there's nothing, right? This is- I think what you're saying right there is very much aligned to what Tonton was saying just worded a bit differently, where Tantan was speaking about find your own materials, make those your own. These are things that are not taught in our institutions. Just, I think, also to catch you up as to a conversation that was happening whilst you were away, Valerie, yeah. is there was this conversation about, um, and Tantan helped me if I, if I mislead this in some way, um, where Mpeti was saying he agrees with what Tantan is saying, because this idea of um, using alternative materials 
is not being stuck in the box of here's your box of art materials, make art. It's here's your box of art materials plus this, be able to think outside of the stuff you've bought. And that seems to be like a mode of art making that is very, very entrenched in at least the members that are on this panel, as well as a couple of other artists I happen to know um, throughout the continent, a mode of work that they work in as Africans, you know. Um, and when you speak of how do we own our own intellectual ideals and our own intellectual property in that sense, it's very much aligned to Tantan saying, let's not look to the other. Let's look to ourselves and own our own way of thinking, our own way of creation, our own way of influence when we create this kind of art forms and deliver it to the world. So I think you guys are pretty much saying the same thing, just in different ways. There's a subtle difference. I, I don't see the other. I don't believe there is another because I believe we're in humanity, right? And art being a primarily human thing. That's one. And I, and I agree that you don't come with a box of materials. You come into the world as an artist. You see the world as an artist and then the materials come to you as an artist. So the art school, which the art school should be teaching is how an artist thinks, what an artist does, what an artist how an artist practices, you know, because looking at the world as an artist is different to looking at the world as a lawyer, looking at the world as a geologist, looking at these are all practices. It's a way of questioning the world, right? And addressing yourself to the world. So you're correct. You know, you're not stuck with a box of tools. The whole world is open to you because if you're an artist, your tools, your materials will come to you. That's what an artist does. So what I'm saying is that an artist is a universal position, right? So, so why, you know, and and you and no one can ever take away the Africanness of an artist who is African. You don't need to do, you don't need to go to that extra step. You don't have to prove it to anyone. That is what makes you an African. You know, like Steve Biko actually says, you know, I write what I like, right? Isn't that right? I, what does it mean to say, I write what I like, not because of the other or this, it's because I like it. This is really a radical position. It's a radical position to say. Agreed, because however. He's not he, referencing. I, you don't I define think. yourself by others because you're just saying, oh, others have selected it for you. So what? Others have selected it. I selected it for me. I can choose this. I can do this. I, because I am, not because of who is around me. And also, if somebody has figured something out that is valuable to me, hell yeah, hell yeah, I will take it. Why should I not take something? Why should, because the other has taken from me because they found it so useful. Why the hell should I not take? Why shouldn't I learn from Chinese calligraphy? Why not? If it's useful to me, if it helps me be true to myself. Can That's I say what something? I say. Yes, Tantan. Tan. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can all hear. You. Yeah, so um, I I agree on uh, on some point with uh, Valerie. Uh, the only problem issue I have is um, is uh, when you say um, artists are universal. I have a problem with that. I don't think artists are universal. Uh, because when you talk about an artist as, uh, as an individual, um, as an individual, as a human being, yes, you can be universal. But the moment you become an artist, uh, the moment you practice art, you are not anymore universal. Because arts go hand to hand with and hand in hand with culture, with identity means where you come from. So for me to be Tonton Kabea today, standing here and talking and show my work. I, I did, I, my identity is linked to where I come from. And that makes the richness of, of art. Uh, I, can't, I can't paint like a Chinese. I have to paint as, as, as I come from. I have to paint as where I come from. That's why we have different schools. And 
coming to South Africa, it's just opened me to understand myself to others, not to copy what other people are doing. I will never put uh, Chinese choreography in my work unless it conceptually there is a conversation with that other culture in my work, in a specific work. That's exactly, uh, um, it be somebody else. That's Sorry, everybody. Um, we are running out of time. Would it be, um, I'm sorry to do this, but I think we need to do a bit of a wrap up. Mm -hmm. It's been a very, very engaging conversation. This can obviously go on forever. Okay. And I think <laughs> it's because of the complexity of the topic, right? There is some issues there with this issue with contemporary African art. What that is can be expanded upon forever. Um, as we've seen in this little conversation we've had. But I would like to thank all of you for participating. You have given me personally a lot of food for thought. Thank you, Valerie, for the many bombs you've thrown into this conversation. And for the little one, thank you very much. And thank you to Tantan and for Umteti. And I think I should pass off to now to Sarah to put us all a good evening. And do the I think it was a that. wonderful a discussion guys and certainly when we looked at this topic and we created or, or pulled the sentence out of various discussions we were purposefully looking at something that was complicated and, and we don't perceive there to be an answer we left the dots and the question marks because there may some people may perceive that to be a problem and other people may think there's not a problem at all. Some people may see the negativity of it and some people may see the opportunity of it. Um, I think the point is to have these very interesting, rich debates allows us to do a little bit more and look a little bit further into who we are, who we see ourselves, where we want to go. Um, we are human beings and, and by our nature, we are complicated. Um, and we see the world in very different um, ways. And that, to Valerie's point, is great. That, that should be celebrated. So thank you for all of your time and your effort and your energy in participating in this conversation. Um, to our attendees, I would like to take a moment to say thank you very much. We apologize for running over, but it was a very, very rich discussion. So I think it was worth it. Um, we will put the video up for anyone who wants to rewatch it. Um, and as I mentioned before, there are more panel discussions coming. So please feel free to go to our Facebook page. That's a Meta Foundation's Facebook page. And you can get all the links of what's coming up next week um, for your interest. And with that, I think I would like to say uh, that's a wrap. <laughs> that's right. Stay Thanks, warm, everyone. Thank you Have very much, evening. everybody. Stay Have a good warm. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao.